Hey y'all, so in this video I'm going to show you how to transform plain white flowers into beautiful tie-dye carnations with just a little bit of science and some patience. So let's get started. So you can opt out of this next step if you want just one solid color per flower. But if you want to go for a tie-dye effect, carefully cut the stems in half. Begin by firmly pressing a razor blade into the stem and pulling down. Do this multiple times until you have a large gap in the stem. If you mess up, you can always cut it shorter, but I found that longer stems are better and easier to work with. Before placing the flowers, cut each stem at the bottom at around a 45 degree angle. This will enlarge surface area and increase water retention. I put 10 drops of food coloring and around 2 cups of water into each vase and place one half of a stem in one color and the other half in the other. Again, if you want to go for a solid color, just put the whole stem into one vase. So what's going on here? Plants get the water they need through the roots or stem and pull it up to the leaves where it's needed. Vascular plants, like these carnations, have an inner network of tubes to transport water and nutrients from one part of the plant to the other, just like our veins carry blood. Sugar and other nutrients are sent down the phloem from the leaves to the roots, while water travels from the roots to the leaves through the xylem. The leaf cells use the water to make more sugar, and the rest of it evaporates out of small openings in the leaf through transpiration. Our experiment shows this because as the water evaporates, dye is left behind in the leaves and petals, giving our flowers that nice pastel coloration. But how does water travel up against gravity to get to the leaves? Water moves from an area of high concentration to low through a process called osmosis. Since there's less water inside the stem than in the vase, water starts to move inside the stem and it makes its way up to the leaves and petals because of capillary action. Capillary action happens when the force of the water to stem wall bonds is stronger than the water to water bonds, which are called adhesion and cohesion respectively. You can see this when you pour the same amount of water into different size containers. The water rises higher in the thin vase than the wide one, so it makes sense that a plant stem is tall and thin rather than short and wide. Alright, so now that we know what's going on inside the flower, let's see how long it takes for the petals to turn different colors. I left my flowers out for 10 days, but in retrospect, 7 would have been enough and 8 would have probably been perfect. The colors were most vivid at day 9, but the flowers had already started to wilt. It rained on day 7 and there was a record breaking heat wave on day 9, where you can see the wilting getting progressively worse over the course of a few hours. Another simple experiment to see capillary action in real time is to wet the corner of a paper towel and watch how quickly the water spreads onto the rest of the surface. There are tons of videos on this already, so if you're curious, the experiment is really easy to do and it takes less than two minutes. If your flowers wilt like mine, don't worry. Science is all about making mistakes, writing it down, and doing better next time. Well, that's it. I hope that this video taught you something new about plants. And if not, at least you have some really pretty flowers to give to that special someone or your loved one. Here, Grandma. Oh, like the yellow ones are good. Yeah. Before placing flowers in water, cut the stem so the bottom is slanted at a 45 degree angle. This will help your flowers live longer so you can keep them around for a few more days. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below. Until next time. Bye.